Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. It's not your baby. Our baby. Satan's baby. <laughs> this is episode 181, recorded January 18th, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host, Jeff Moore, and I will tackle another classic, or not-so-classic, film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. Tonight, we're doing <laughs> The Brotherhood of Satan. What we've got here is a bro... Never mind, that doesn't work. All right, with me this week <laughs> are my co-hosts, starting off with the one and only... Fancy man, Jeff Moore. How you doing, Jeff Moore? Fancy. fancy, fancy boy. Look at that shirt. That shirt is fancy. That's just, I got this uh, for Christmas from my daughter-in-law. So I thought yeah, it was nice. It's awesome. Um, it's not my baby. At the <laughs> not my baby. <laughs> not my baby. I'm the baby's pappy. <laughs> <laughs> also joining us tonight is. Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy. Hey. Uh, well, I'm I'm doing fine. We're heavy into testing and stuff at school. And oh, come on, all the cats are in here now. <laughs> but, uh, that's that's the greatest entry uh, intro ever. All the cats are in here. All also, the cats. All the cats. Also joining us tonight is Chad Hunt, comic arts coast, decades or the classic era. Chad Hunt. How you doing, sir? I'm good. The devil made me do it. Daddy? Or did mm. she? <laughs> That's what they um, all say. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'm excited tonight. Uh, we are going to be reviewing The Brotherhood of Satan. Uh, th- we have a little bit of a, a backstory with this particular film uh, because uh, way back when Santos Allen Jr. and I did two episodes on the, another podcast that was the monster movie podcast that was counting down the best horror films of each year in the decade of 1970. We'd each pick one. And then that gave birth to decades of horror 1970s and all the other decades of horror. So it was a wonderful thing to experience. And of course, you know, uh, Santos Allen Jr. had wonderful uh, picks. And this was one of his picks for 1971 was the Brotherhood of Satan with Strother Martin. And I'm been I haven't seen it and I've been dying to see it, but I've been waiting, waiting for us to pick it. So there's, have... there's still two more. There's still two more we haven't done on his list. Oh, one one is Shriek of the Mutilated. Oh, uh, the Dude. other one slips my mind right now. Uh, uh, I don't know about he, that Shriek of the Mutilated, <laughs> but I guess he, it's going to happen. He was a man of refined taste. He did. He did. Uh, all right, but what we're going to do, let's get into it. What we're going to do is uh, I want to know when everybody first saw this film. Uh, we're going to start off with Jeff. What was your first What was your first reaction to The Brotherhood of Satan? This is the first time I've seen it. Um, I saw it. You know, I became aware of it when uh, Santos and you did that show, uh, but I didn't scout it out, and it's not always available and when it was available i didn't pick on it but uh i will confess to uh having bought the arrow blu-ray the, the, oh very nice a, if you're trying a, to shock us that the, yeah. we're, we're past that point that you yeah, that's blu-ray. Not, it's, I, you know what <laughs> i tried to buy god monster of indian flats but it's it's not available anymore i guess oh. it was a limited it's sold out on you uh, oh no oh no <laughs> anyway um this is the first time I saw it. And I, I, so we just did a two hour time change and I had a little trouble staying awake the first time I watched it. So I watched it <laughs> again. And the second time I, I enjoyed the hell out of it because it's really got some neat little things going on there with the cinematography. And I love, love, love Strother Martin. I love the pairing of LQ Jones and Alvy Moore whose production company also did uh, A Boy and His Dog, which we did a year ago. Um, And uh, there was something else in there. Oh, uh, yeah, Strother Martin is just so cool. He's just one of those guys that's everywhere. 
he's right up there with uh who'd we who'd we do on uh black lake uh dub taylor you know he's yeah. he's they're sort of good counterparts i guess uh but i but i i liked the way there was a lot of neat camera movement you know there's like that one shot where the guy is standing out on the desert and he's looking around and the camera follows him around in a circle and you see his uh, i just thought that was cool and that's pre um uh, what do you what do you call the steady cam yeah that's mm-hmm. pre steady cam right so uh, this was actually shot in 69 uh anyway um and then i also liked the satanist because Strother Martin played it so straight, but it didn't have the same. I don't know what it was about it, but it, I I bought it. You know, it didn't have all the. It seemed more straightforward than what we get a lot of times in terms of mumbo jumbo. You know. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um. So yeah, and kids, creepy kids. What else do you want? <laughs> creepy kids this, yeah this is a this might be one of the early creepy kid movies all right uh i got ahead of myself and i forgot to do the card so we're gonna do this card now we're gonna interject it in the middle of all this so here we, that's not it we got a good <laughs> night ahead of us right here the brotherhood of satan 1971 directed by bernard McAvity. is that right uh written by william welch sean mcgregor uh, and L.Q. Jones. The cast includes Struther Martin, L.Q. Jones, Charles Bateman, uh, Ani Capri, Charles Robinson, Alvy Moore, <laughs> Helene Winston, and Joyce Easton. Production- and that's Alvy Moore right there. And that's Alvy yeah. Moore right there. Some people might remember him <laughs> as Mr. Kimball on Green Acres. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Production <laughs> company, Four Star Excelsior, L.Q. J.A.F. Uh, okay, cool beans. Uh, the filming location is New Mexico, California. Uh, release date was August 6, 1971. Uh, other titles uh, are, Stott, are you, how about you do it, Jeff? Oh, it's just Stott, the Scrown, City uh, of Horror. City of Horror. Working titles is Come in Children and The Guru Vampire. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it, what, it made $2.2 million? Okay. Uh, yeah, that, well, that's an ultimate movie rankings that says that. And I've just recently discovered that they will do a thing where if they don't have actual box office numbers, that may be too long of an explanation without me reading the email I got from the guy. But no. but uh, what he does is he uses, I think it was called the Harris Harrison Ledgers hmm. uh, that, that do ratings for movies. And then they'll take all the movies that have the same ratings for that year you know, whether it was pair, poor, or fair, or whatever, mm-hmm. and average out their theater rentals of the known ones. And then they'll apply that to the unknown dollars. And then they have a, a formula for coming up with the box office in mm-hmm. relation to the theater rentals. So, so it's approximately. Nobody else <laughs> had that on there. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a big estimate. Guesstimate. Yeah. You know, it, it's... There's a method to it. But. Method to the mat. A synopsis is a family is trapped in a desert town by a cult of senior citizens who recruit the town's children to worship Satan. I love me a cult of senior citizens. There yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I'm not opening that door. I'm not doing it. Not opening that door. Chad Hunt, sir, what was your first impression of Brother of Satan? And when did you first see it? Uh, this is my first time seeing it. Um, and I liked it a lot. I really did. I thought it was a good story. Uh, Struther Martin's just excellent. Uh, nobody could deliver those corny ass lines, uh, like he, like he can, uh, when he was addressing the, the coven or whatever and, um, love that. And the, the children were, I didn't really know what was going on. I have to admit when the tank runs over the car at the beginning, I know it had something to do with how the ending was, but I wasn't sure like what the children were doing with the toys was actually happening in real life. I guess it means that the the toys that the children had were coming to life and killing the grown-ups. Like the the guy on the horse that came through and beheaded mm-hmm. Joey Joey's dad and stuff like that. So that's what that's, I thought too. That's that's yeah. what I, that okay, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. But but yeah, it was I really like this. It it 
and uh, we talked about it before the show, and I think Bill mentioned uh, the only problem I had with it was some of the scenes just went on way too long, like the the drive in the town by the the husband, the daughter, and, and the girlfriend would just that just took forever, um, and they were drawn out uh, really long. But other than that, um, it was sort of scary. Some of the scenes with the kids were kind of scary. Um, I love the outfit. Um, <laughs> Struther Martin wore during the during the coven uh, scenes. I love that. Um, and it had a, had a good concept. They needed 13 children to uh, transfer souls into the 13 uh, members of the coven so, to keep them going forever. That was a cool, pretty cool idea. And um, yeah, I, I really, really liked it. I can't find too much fault in it. Um, but I, I enjoyed watching it. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Bill Mulligan, sir. When did you first see Brotherhood of Satan? And what was your first impression? I first saw it yesterday. Yesterday. Cut, cutting it a little close. And uh, wow. So, you know, we talk, we watch classics and not so classics. And this one's sort of both. The first 30 minutes, half the movie, very slow moving. And, and yeah, I did say... You could have taken each scene was well shot. I was super impressed with the wide angle, the you know the the wide screen um, use, very western like. So that was cool, and many of the shots were super well composed and had good camera movement. Something you don't expect from a low budget movie, and this is a low budget movie. You you figured that out at the very beginning when they show a car being crushed by a tank, without really showing that, using a lot of imagination and stuff. Um, so it looked really good, but you know, each shot, I'm thinking if you just cut 30% out of each shot, you'd have a much leaner movie, but this movie's already fairly short. So I guess they figured they had to pad it on. And at that point I wasn't expecting much. And for me, the turning point when I started loving this movie was when we first actually saw the brotherhood of Satan and Struther Martin going nuts and everything. And, and, you know, the sequence there from that point on, I'm in for the ride. It just, it picked up. And that is a thing that you see a lot with these seventies drive-in movies there. They are a slow burn that the first half of the movie is set up. And then the second half of the movie, all of a sudden, boom. So you see something like Macon County line and the ads make it sound like it's just a nonstop chase film with good guys and bad guys and cops and robbers and everything. And now the first half of the movie is just a couple of brothers having little adventures and everything. And then all of a sudden at the midpoint, something happens and off we go and it turns into a completely different movie. So uh, once this got going, yeah, it's fun. The, the, the Satanists are evil. They have a good plot. The kids are creepy. It was it was a lot of fun. And it's, you know, it's got those, it's got those 70 elements. Let's not be expecting a happy ending. This is a 70s grindhouse movie. The best you can hope for is ambiguously bad. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they, they, they just they really did a good job here. And and the actors are having a good time. Some are better than others. I really like LQ Jones. I love Struther Martin. And he looks like he's just having the time of his life. <laughs> yeah, he does. You know, I'm just I'm just guessing this was a movie that was a lot of fun to make. Here's a LQ and Struther were in the Wild Bunch together. They made a number of movies together. Fit each other like comfortable old shoe. And just having just having a great time. The kids, you know, the kids the kids are fine when they're just being quiet and creepy and when they're trying to act their kids. You know, they're, they're just local kids. Ugh, what can you do? But I, I seriously enjoyed this much more than, than I thought I would and much more than I was when I first started watching it. So best it's better to end strong, mm -hmm. start out a little slow and end strong in some ways that kind of sets you up for the, you know, you think you're you think you understand where this is going, but stick with it. And I think you'll you'll have a good time. I know I did. So yeah. I'm really glad we picked this. And I can see why Santos would have liked it. Yeah, 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 kids, kids. He likes scary kids. I, I, uh, yeah. So for me, I hadn't never seen. It. I knew about it, of course, uh, mainly because of you know having Struther Martin in it. But I never, never approached it. I just never found myself, you know, in in a position to watch it. 
Um, and then, of course, once we knew it was going to be a pick here and it became readily available, like I said earlier, I avoided it. I, you know, I just, oh, I got to wait. I got to wait. Um, so I was anxious to watch this when we finally picked it. And I was, Bill, yeah, I was a little concerned at first. I was like, I don't understand this beginning at all. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> um, and it has that little, this little mystery about, you know, why are we stuck in the town? Because uh, other people are stuck in the town and they're trying to figure out how did you get in? Because um, others w- couldn't make it in. Um, mm-hmm. so there was, there's all kinds of weird, you know, mystery about it. And it, it, I mean, yeah, I mean, like by the once we get to what the cult is, the Brotherhood of Satan, and, and what's happening there, and man, just Scrother Martin is both delivering the lines with about as much conviction and straight face as you can, but yet chewing the scenery at the same <laughs> time. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, I mean, he's, he's animated and vocal and loud and he's just, you know, he's just, he's not hesitant at all. He's, he's all in and it is some hokey garbage coming out of his face, but it's <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. I, I think I love this film. I really <laughs> did enjoy the heck out of this film. Mm-hmm. I do want to watch it again. And, uh, it definitely, uh, yeah, it's, it, Maybe I mean it's hard to be the best Brother Martin role because I think that's another film altogether. It's not horror at all, but um, and we all know what that may be. Well, maybe mm-hmm. have other choices, but um, but it in the horror genre could be his best horror movie. It could be, hmm. could easily be. I have to watch again oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the snake movie. Uh, but um, yeah, so I I was. This, I, I was confused a lot. There are scenes in here. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> what is all that? I don't, I don't care. Move on. Let's get, you know, it, it was, it, even though it did feel like it had some long scenes, it, it, it had momentum, right? There were, it was always go, heading forward at least. It, it didn't feel like it was stalling out. Uh, the characters were, you know, neat to have come back and forth. So I enjoyed the hell out of it. I don't know what's Me happening too. with Jeff. Jeff's popping in and out. There's Clint, yeah. Beanie and Cecil. Yeah. <laughs> over for um, all right. Well, let's let's take a look at the poster before we get into some specifics because this poster, Chad Hunt, why do we love this poster so much? It looks like a comic book cover. It's it does. Uh, yeah. It, I, I love it. I love this. And it, it, it's one that'll show up well in black and white, I guess. And um, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's just it's got that nice graphic style it's cheap it's cheap uh, of course but cool font nice nice graphic look it actually does look like struther martin if you know struther martin it kind yeah. Of, well yeah, yeah it's easy to do with the hair right so <laughs> yeah yeah uh but i thought they did a great job i mean this the, if i would imagine that this brought people to the theater if not the theater it definitely brought them to the drive-in i bet this was a hit in the drive-ins yeah uh, that's and that's all I was gonna say. That's how do you calculate how much a movie made when I'm guessing this spent a lot of time at the drive in sharing the bill with two other films? You know, how do you divvy up what the receipts are? Mm-hmm. Especially since usually one of those films would be something horrible from Andy Milligan that nobody came to the theater to see it, they just needed a third movie and that one fit the bill. Mm. But but this one's got yeah, I, I like that poster. I mean, you know, you know what you're getting. When you go to see Brotherhood of Satan, and that's the poster, mm-hmm. no and mystery. you get exactly what it looks like there. I mean, that's it. Yeah, that is it. All right, we have to look at Struther Martin here. Struther, um, the top—that's the classic Struther Martin that we all yeah. know, right? With Friendly glasses, local his doctor. Little, his hair's a little disheveled. <laughs> He's got the drawl going. Mm-hmm. Um, the other character he plays. Um, or the other a version son of a bitch. He's, he, a, he's a piece of work. It, I think that's, that, I don't think I've seen him. I can't recall seeing him in a role like that. He did no. great. Um, I'm, you know, when I think of Strother Martin, I think that top picture, like I said, but man, mm-hmm. he, yeah, like you said, he was a son of a bitch. He was, man, he was, it, it was all about bringing you down, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Giving him crap. 
it was the, the dialogue in in those scenes when he was in the, with the coven were just some of the most wonderfully uh corny drivel you've ever you've ever heard and he he made it sound menacing and uh real and like <laughs> you know here come to judge you know kind of thing yeah and, and you know i like these satanists i mean i don't like them but I like this this portrayal of them because usually it's like a bunch of, you know, sullen goth teens who worship Satan because they, I don't know, they want to be able to afford better clothes at Hot Topic or something. They got no reason to be doing it. But these old farts, they're, they've got one foot in the grave mm -hmm. and you could see where they would just throw all morality and ethics to the wind, kill children if that's what it took to just get one more chance at life. Yeah. And, and and Struther, he treats them with the contempt they deserve. You know? <laughs> Even Satan doesn't like these people, but you got to have minions. But just because you need minions doesn't mean you, you're not going to make them crawl and beg and acknowledge what wiggly worms they are. And uh, yes, that's that's how it should be done. Absolutely. Sorry to any Satanists out there I might have defended. <laughs> you might have. Um, Put a curse on me. Boy, if I don't show up in two weeks or if I do and I've got like running sores all over yeah. my face or one of my ears fell off. He'll have Rosie Greer's head on the side <laughs> of his own. Then I really am sorry if I offended anyone. Yeah. So I guess, uh, Jeff, he, uh, Charlotte Martin's a staple in Western films, right? Oh, yeah. I mean... Uh, I love him from, uh, of course, Cool Hand Lou, but uh, mm, right. what I really love him from is uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Oh, uh, man, yeah. The, he's that. the uh, mining supervisor in Bolivia that hires them as security, mm. and he's always singing some stupid song. I can't think of the name of it now, but uh, <laughs> anyway. He's, he's great in that part. He, he just tells them they're, they're idiots. <laughs> he's a great character actor because he's a great character. You feel you feel like, you know, if you if you had dinner with Struther Martin, you'd be entertained from the beginning to right. the very end. I well, mean, and that's why I love him, you know, so much because he's playing a PhD in herpetology. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, no. But he does it. You yeah. believe it? Sure. You you believe not only yeah we're gonna do that movie sometime. Uh, not only do you believe that he is a professor of herpetology, you also believe that this incredibly intelligent man thinks it's a good idea to turn people in snakes for reasons. I don't know, because global warming. Otherwise, I don't know. It, yeah. it just makes no sense. And they gloss over it, and you're like, yeah, sure, why not? Because yeah. uh, the world would be better if it was run by snakes. Yeah. Dr. Carl Stoner. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that explains a lot of things. He's like, he's on HR Puff and stuff. Uh, but yeah, Gunsmoke, uh, Bonanza, every, everything like that. Uh, like oh, said, he's in everything. Virginia. Yeah. 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 Uh, he was in True Grit. He was in The Wild Bunch, like you said. Um, but yeah, horror wise, <laughs> like yeah. Said, I mean, he was in Rooster Cogburn too. He was like, yeah. In every, um, what was the one I saw and I was looking? Oh, he he was Mr. Stoner again on Up and Smoke. Oh my god, he was, was, was in what? he was in Up and Smoke as Cheech and Chong. Yeah. Uh, Night Nightwing. He was in Nightwing. Okay. Oh yeah. Nightwing. What was, what was that picture? What movie was that from that you had in the bottom of your Martin image? Oh, not that one. Never mind. It's on the LQ Jones one. I remember oh, now. Okay. Uh, um, that was Wild Bunch. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. All right, well, let's move on to ben. our leads. <laughs> ben. Uh, what do we want to say about this fine gentleman? He's got a heck of a jaw. He he looks he looks like he came from a comic book. That guy's, you know, that's a man's man right there. And, uh, a little wooden in the acting, but and I didn't Char really care much about his character, to tell you the truth. Charles Bateman. I didn't either. You didn't care about his character? Well, so was it, I mean, do you think that's one of the falls and fallbacks of this movie is that it doesn't have a strong lead? 
Um, yeah, and also these these were the people that I had to spend that first half an hour with, and they weren't that interesting. It's not mm-hmm. until LQ and Struther showed up that I was like, yeah, let's stick her with these guys. Yeah. I, yeah, he wasn't very um... – uh, I don't know. They did nothing in that first half hour to endear you to this character. It was he was just he was like there as a placeholder or something to get them into town and and um, I don't know. He just wasn't that strong of a lead. I didn't think. I was more interested in her. <laughs> well, you, you know, were. she had some uh, her nightmares she was having. Yeah, and, those nightmares are crazy. Uh, and uh, stuff like that. She was she was given a little bit more to do than, than yeah. he, he was. I think. The nightmares were cool too. Yeah. yeah, basically he was just our lead. He was the guy we were following right. through the the movie because you mm-hmm. know, with a shady background and a child he doesn't really know how to raise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this guy had a lot of series. He was in a he was in a regular called Manhunt way back in '59. Played. <laughs> oh. Detective George Peters, you probably knew that, Jeff. Uh, two, uh, I knew he was in a cop show. Was... Yeah, two Two Faces West. I don't. I've never even heard of that. He, he was in that. He Marshal Ben January and Doctor Rick January. So it looks like he played twins. Does that sound familiar to you? Hmm. Um, that's a new one for me. Hazel. People remember Hazel. He was yeah. yeah. Williams and Hazel. And then later on, he was in. Uh, and Days of Our Lives, and then in um, uh, Santa Barbara. Hmm. A couple episodes of Six Million Dollar Man. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> uh, not too much genre work. Not too much genre work. This is yeah. probably the only, the only real horror thing I can find scanning through it. Um, he was uncredited in the Poseidon Adventure. We'll give him that. <laughs> he was floating body. <laughs> floating body number. He, he was a first officer, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to him but um but yeah yep do you think yeah he's the guy uh, shelly winters dolphin kicked when she was swimming uh, <laughs> God, please um all right creepy kids creepy cool. kids cast. those glasses oh my god it's like was she she was devo before devo was well I'm wondering, so so yeah are these are these kids like What well, yeah, yeah. you were saying? The, the kids girl. are creepy, but that little lady in the back there, she's yeah, creepier yeah. to me. Well, yeah. she looks like the "Don't Look Now" dwarf. Yeah, she's. Oh my gosh, I was thinking she's going to just shove the one that's the outlined by the there. yellow burst is uh, <laughs> Alvy Moore's daughter. Oh, ah, nice. And and there are two kids that are daughters of the director in this as well. And I and the rest really of them under... were like friends. You know, they were just yeah. kids of family friends of LP I didn't really Jones. understand why why is she burst in that incredible special effect of, uh... <laughs> <laughs> she was supposed to be the uh their daughter and she said she kept laughing too much during the scenes and so yeah <laughs> they switched her over to the one that can't talk <laughs> yeah that can be a problem when you know you're shooting on film and say hey kid Video hasn't been invented yet. We got to get this processed. You're costing us real money. Yeah. Well, this this would be an interesting topic. Is like you know, there's children horror films. Uh, mm-hmm. All the all the you know, from Omen to the children. Well, now, now I, <laughs> you know, Jeff, we have Village of the Dam first, probably. Yeah, but this is true. this is right up there for American, I think. Yeah. Jeff, you have the DVD. Did you? Uh, my understanding is they had some interviews with some of the kids grown up. Yeah, they interviewed. Uh, uh, I think her name was Allison. I don't recall exactly. Uh, Alvy Moore's daughter, and another guy, and they just talked about it. You know, they didn't really have a a real good handle on what was going on, but but they. She said, uh, you know, she she had the part where she just stands there and holds the music box and she doesn't talk, so. When they had the party scene, she was really mad because she couldn't like run around and play and eat cake mm-hmm. and stuff. She just had to stand there. <laughs> I don't know. I, what, what, did you have a specific question? Just, they just talked about it in general and that everybody was, you know, everybody was really nice. And LQ Jones was like, you know, LV Moore and LQ Jones were buddies. They LQ Jones was come over for dinner all the time. And um, so. They decided to put on a show. 
All right. Well, speaking of LQ Jones, he's the producer, writer, and supporting actor in this. He he's a sheriff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about him, Jeff. Well, he's LQ Jones. It's LQ Jones. <laughs> he <laughs> LQ Jones. Well, he directed uh, a boy and his dog, mm-hmm. which is really odd. It's, it's just a really bizarre connection yeah. that that's how boy and his dog ended up getting filmed by this production company with LV Moore and LQ Jones. But, um, uh, and did a good job, which is even more amazing. Yes, and yes. the whole thing, the whole thing is odd because LQ Jones from the interviews I've seen, everything doesn't seem like the kind of guy, you know, you go to Harlan Ellison back in those days, back in his prime. It's like, Hey, this guy, LQ Jones, you know, he's going to make your movie. And you'd think Ellison would have just hit a gasket or something, but they seem to get along really, really well right up to the end. Um, we lost both of them relatively recently. Uh, LQ was like 93 years old when he finally uh, mm. passed away and still sharp as attack. Yeah. Um, he's, he was a cool guy. Now, he didn't make a lot of movies, but I think he did a really good job with the ones he did. Certainly a boy and his dog is a classic. Mm-hmm. That's that will be, you know, they made another remember forever. Uh, horror movie in the late sixties. I think that's all their their company only lists those mm-hmm. three. Um, I can't recall what it was. I can't remember what it was called, but the, I'm not expecting a lot. I, I got to search it out, but I'm not expecting a lot because one of the quotes I saw is that in this movie they he said they they did a lot of things from the mistakes they learned on the first one. So, which is what a first movie ought to be the one where you you figure out what not to do. So if you want to know more about him, the uh, A Boy and His Dog Blu-ray has a great short with him and Ellison sitting talking, you know. Oh, that'd be oh, great. Wow. Decades wow. later. And you could right. see how they got along. I mean, Ellison would, you know, flip him some shit and he, he and would just, he'd either flip it right back. Flip or it just right go, back. Or just Shut shrug your shoulders and go, <laughs> You're right. You yeah. know, if you're not going to get mad about it, it doesn't yeah, you know, yeah. get the rise out of him. Uh, he did direct a TV episode, Chad, and this is for you and for me. Uh, but he did direct uh, an episode of The Incredible Hulk. LQ. So, yep. Oh, it, cool. On, Very on cool. the line from 1980. So hmm. uh, we got that. We have that, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was also uh, in an episode as well, which I think it was the same episode. If I can find it again it's there's so he actually was in a lot of stuff there was so much he uh, is. a lot of tv a lot of tv the uh the movie before this was the witch maker okay and then it also lists him as producer for the devil's bedroom as justice mcqueen hmm. his, his justice real name yeah. <laughs> his real name which is a the devil's bedroom is a western drama So. He was in, he was in the Beast Within. He was Sheriff Pool. No, oh, that's right. Yeah, um, he was in Time Writer as Sheriff Potter. <laughs> he plays a lot of sheriffs. I mean, he's like in the Fall Guy. He was Sheriff Leclerc. <laughs> did, I, did I not have a graphic for him? Picture nope. of him? Yeah. Nope. Yep. Oh, okay. Where's it at? I don't see it. Oh God! I'll tell you what. I'll get it up there. Get it up there. We'll pull there. it up. I, I was up there. This is this is the old. Right uh, you switch computers and it drops pictures for some reason. Mm, nice. Uh, but yeah. And then, so the other is Albie Moore and we'll come back and show the pictures. So I don't, we don't have a picture of Albie Moore either. If you've got one of those. Uh, that's what I put up. That's why I put that one. Cause he still didn't have one, but. Uh, okay. The... Oh, that's why you put it in the, yeah. Albie Moore is in our intro there. Do, 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 do. Green acres. <laughs> I, I, you know, I didn't even think of that. My wife is so good at figuring out. I mean, she wasn't even a big Green Acres fan, but as soon as he shows up, she's like, isn't that the guy from Green Acres? And I'm like, you know who you're married to? I'm face blind. I don't, I, I know LQ Jones. and I know Struther Martin and everyone else is just a mystery to me in this movie. But we looked it up and yeah, sure enough, she was right. Albie Jones. Mm-hmm. He's the angry taxi, taxi driver and Herbie rides again. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much saw that one. Oh yeah, the Herbie. You know the Herbie movies when they came out, one would like win best special effects. I mean, there was a time when Disney 
was was what we thought special effects were all about when it came to live action cool in you know and then star wars came along and showed us what what you know special effects really were mm -hmm. but when you look at the academy awards for best special effects um herbie the love bug would beat out when dinosaurs ruled the earth every time well they still promote the you know the vw bug splitting in half and going two different directions they, <laughs> they went they used to do that on the uh uh, on the uh, the backlot thing, backlot tour. There he is. So there's LQ, a man who gained hair as he got older. <laughs> <laughs> who does that? Not me. <laughs> he didn't need to gain too much. Look at that beaver he's got on top of his head there. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, yeah. Dave, I thought it was Daniel Dave, Boone for a second. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I would have matched him with the, the picture at the top, but... It, yeah, and there at the bottom is uh, from the Wild Bunch, the two, Struther and uh, LQ yeah. together. And yeah, LQ, like I said, 93 years old, but, I, you know, toward toward the end, he was still like he would, they would have a showing of usually a boy and his dog, because that was the, the one everybody remembered. And he'd show up there and take questions. And Wow. If I make it to 93, I hope I have half the wits about me that he seemed to still have. Join life. Well, one of the things I like about this movie is, you know, when it ends, I'm not exactly sure what happened at the end. Maybe we can talk about our interpretations. But <laughs> um, as you're going through it, it doesn't like it doesn't spell everything out for you. It it hmm. it it expects you to be intelligent. So like, yeah, I didn't get what's going on with the tank at first either. But then when I saw the kid afterwards pick up the toy tank and walk away, then I yeah, then I kind of you kind of get it. My, and then my later wife on, would... we're seeing that the knight on the horse with the sword, and I'm going, uh oh, because right. they kind of zoomed in on that. Uh, what is this going to be? It'll... My wife was actually afraid that that toy tank was supposed to be the tank that was running over the car because we have inflicted movies that would try some some stunt like that on. Mm, uh... Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it was that was it was so strangely done, and then it had the audio effects. Mm -hmm. You know, over top of the kids screaming and everything. It's right. Like, well, what's right. going on? And like, well, that's, that's what going. confused me about the end. It looked like the kids were reenacting the uh, ceremony there, with they because it looked like they had a few little figures there that looked like uh, uh, some of the coven uh, members there all laying down. It looked like they had reenacted that. So I, did, so I, but at that point their souls had already been transferred into the children. So I, I don't know what was going on. I don't know what was going on at the Martin end. Martin whips out his flaming sword. Yeah. <laughs> That's I didn't know what dirty. happened. I just sort of assumed they must have uh, the, the senior, the cult of senior citizens must have assumed all their bodies yeah, and right, all right. the rest of it. Well, I got the impression this wasn't the first time. I, oh, I did yeah, too, right. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like this is, this is a cycle, right? And the one, and the one plot, so I want to ask if any you guys, if I missed something, um, again, Shauna was asking me, why was that one attractive young woman in this group? I can understand why these old poops need to, need to, you know, they're mm -hmm. about to shuffle off this mortal coil, but she's, she's looking pretty good. She doesn't need to go back into the body of a, of a little kid. That's only going to buy her another decade or two. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it either. You know, I, I, if they had left something in, like maybe she had a fatal disease or for whatever reason, but oh, okay. She just I sort of stood out like a sore thumb. Maybe she was a uh, like a super Satan worshiper, but she caved Ooh. pretty fast, like a bunch of them one day. Yeah, she didn't mind beating that lady up at the uh, no bottom no. down too much. <laughs> I thought. Maybe oh no, she they was all did, and they all kind of went off on her, didn't they? Yeah. We all yeah. like that. Yeah. And wasn't she the lady who got beaten up? Was not? Wasn't she also in a boy and his dog? That she was one of the people in the underground uh, village. I don't know. I feel like, you know, when I was like skimming through IMDb, it seems like a lot of these folks worked with this crew again. Well, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, it definitely was, you know, for a, for a large part of it, that was a group of friends. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm absolutely certain that LQ Jones, you know, was buddies with Struther Martin, you know, and, um, and maybe LV Moore as well. Yes, she was in... A boy and a dog. Shaggy D.A. returned to Witch Mountain. Hmm. There we yeah. go. Yep. Uh, she specialized name? in little old lady roles, which yeah. you know, makes Helene, sense. Helene Winston. <laughs> yeah. her, her character's name was 
Dame Alice. Oh yeah, Dame Alice. <laughs> but yeah, well, then there's the couple that are sitting by their. He's reading out of the Bible, I guess, and the, the doll walks out. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the doll. We don't have a picture of the dolls, but what were what were we? Okay. So there's this weird when the when the kids' parents choke out, right, and the dolls are showing up. And then one of them's crying, right? Mm. What what the hell was that about? What's that? I mean, were they were they being pulled uh, into the doll or you're you're on mute, Chad. Can't hear a word you're saying. I said I said all of a sudden this little hydrocephalic doll comes out and starts shaking and and they <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it would what the purpose was. Well, there was more than one because it, it was weird. Yeah, yeah, but that one was the one that caught my attention because it was the creepiest. And then the but, one, yeah, and the one had tears. I just like what what is that? What does that tell me? What do what do I what do I want to get out of this? And I was trying to figure out if if the they were, you know, if the Satanists were in the dolls coming through, or if the kids were going into the dolls. Yeah, and, I mean, oh, what the this, movie, this movie's got creepy kids and creepy dolls. Boy, if they if they'd managed to stick a chimp with a razor in there, it'd just be the trifecta of things I or, don't want to mm-hmm. see in movies. Crawling big hands. spiders creep me out. Crawling yeah, hands. Big, <laughs> hands. Yeah, that's right. Well, I guess maybe because the dolls were shaking so violently, the parents were, and they would just yeah turn their insides to mush or something because yeah, yeah. they started bleeding from the mouth. And but I, I assume the the kids are the ones that are animating these things because it's their toys. Is what I. Oh you know, uh, yeah. Okay. So if it was the toys, were the toys doing? Were supposed to be doing that to them? But were I the kids so. already possessed? I mean, were they? Well, the know, ones they, that were captured, I thought were. Oh. Uh, because yeah. the, the, their kids just walked off. They just like got Pied Piper off. Yeah, to them. yeah. I think yeah. the ones that are already captured were yeah. under that spell or whatever. Hmm. But like you say, the movie's intelligent enough that we don't have that moment where the the villain sits us down and explains the entire plot to mm-hmm. Batman, giving him a chance to escape, and you know, yeah, so. I, I, I like monologuing can can be a little tiresome in these. <laughs> there's there's not much. I mean, there's a lot of dialogue. But I don't know if you would call what um, Strother Martin's doing is monologuing. Um, <laughs> but he definitely goes off. <laughs> yeah, just ass chewing is what he's doing. Mm. Uh, yeah, one of the best things we mentioned it earlier is the the. I thought it was a knight, but I guess it was something else on the horse with the sword, right? I thought it was a knight. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought yeah, it was too. Right, yeah. right. Okay, comes and lobs that. But I love the way they did the special effects. Oh, and I thought of you right. because yeah. all they yeah. did was have him lay down and kind of tuck his head and pull the shirt up a little bit, and it looked like yeah. his head was gone. Yeah. But in and shadow that like, too. That was cool. Yeah. I like. And, it. Yeah, the shadow thing is always a great, great way to do it, and looks so much better than what you can pull off with the budget they probably had. Mm-hmm. But it worked. It was like that was yeah, really amazing. I, was, I chuckled and said, "Bill's gonna love that." Yeah. <laughs> That's a Bill Mulligan special. No, it's right it's, there. it's funny because literally this week I've been finishing up editing a film we did over Christmas that has someone get their head chopped off with an axe. And uh, needless to say, we also did not have a big budget, so uh, we used the magic of editing, and we didn't do shadows. That would have been good, but we, I'm I'm not. I'm not beneath taking a um, severed um, mannequin doll head and having it play, uh, you know, someone else and just sort of sticking a wig on it and tossing it up in the air. And, yeah. Well, roll so, right up and hit the preacher's leg, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's what sells it. Yeah. Blood all that over his pant leg. Because, of course, it looks phony, but. You know, you got the audience on your side because it rolled up and hit their leg, and they're just thinking, they're not thinking, boy, that's a phony looking mannequin head. They're thinking, ooh, gross. It probably got all over his shoes, and that'll never come out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was well done. It was well done. <laughs> all right. Uh, do we got to make uh, it relatable? Oh, there you go. Uh, we got to do uh, taglines. I was going to oh, say. Oh, yes. Uh, you almost got away, Chad. <clears throat> okay. Are you ready? Uh, are you ready? I, I imagine. I lost my uh you lost the audio. Ah. Ah. Oh my god. Is that it? That's <laughs> it. You gotta get three. I like three. Okay. 
So your taglines for Brotherhood of Satan are as follows. A demon spirit of madness and murder holds a California town in the grip of terror. Okay. Mm -hmm. The grip of terror. it, it, It happened, yeah. During the day, witches look like everybody else, but at night holds a California town in a grip of terror. I like how you did that. I'm not sure that's grammatically correct. (laughs) But probably not. (laughs) All right. The third tagline The Prince of Darkness arises from the bowels of the earth, but only made it to the esophagus because we never saw him. (laughs) That's one way out. (laughs) Um, On today's ABC Afternoon Special, a story of contemporary (laughs) family witchcraft in California. (laughs) Oh, my God. Bill Mulligan, sir, (laughs) you mentioned that. What what was this a double feature with? It was shown as a double feature with THX1138. Yes. That is the strangest. I swear, these guys. That might be where the money came from. (laughs) <laughs> I, don't, well, that, I don't know that movie i can't imagine anyone who likes it. thx 1138 being happy that this is the movie that came with it and i can't imagine i really can't imagine anyone who's like let's go see brotherhood of satan they must have wanted to open an artery sitting through thx 1138 well and if i'd have gone to the theater in 1971 i'd have got a package of sultan satan's soul seeds Oh, easy for you to say. Yep, yep. Satan's soul seeds. That'll put asses in seats. And, and what if they bloom red or pink, you're safe. If it's so, white. <laughs> so, so to explain to the audience, this was there. This is how they were going to get people to come to the theater. When you showed up, they gave you a packet of Satan's soul seeds, and you were to plant them and see <laughs> what grew. And supposedly, the color of the flower would tell you whether you were safe. Or science, and uh, basically they were what fava beans or something. I yeah, mean, they just... a great precursor to Silence of the Lambs. They're fava beans. Fava yeah, beans. Oh, they should have called William Castle. <laughs> yes, okay. well, I'm sure that was yeah. what they were going. Oh, for. you know what? If I, if but you know what? Oh, the fun you could have had back then if we'd gone to do that and everything. And my dopey sisters came home with these Satan seeds and planted them in the ground. I would have spent the entire night while they slumbered. Doing something, I don't know, putting up some kind of horrible vine or something that looked like Audrey from Little Shop of Horrors or a giant beanstalk, admittedly, that's a little ambitious, but something would have grown the next day. There would have been something crawling out of the ground that would have, like, yeah, <laughs> scarred him for life. <laughs> scarred him for life. Here's another one for Chad. Uh, the comic book that Toby offers KT. Did you catch that? Yeah, I, well, saw, uh, I saw a couple of them. Unknown. Yeah, was it? Adventures into the Unknown, issue mm. 142 from August of 1963. Oh, I bet that sells for a buku bunch of money now. Yeah, probably. A buck and a half, yeah. Except that kid was holding with his greasy little paws, taking <laughs> yeah. it down from a 9.8 to a 4.3. So, Dog eared as hell. Yeah, Dog yeah. eared as hell, rolled up and put in his back pocket. Exactly yeah. what you know. Oh. <laughs> Probably had like a super valuable Mickey Mantle uh, baseball card in the Insert, sprockets of his yeah. bike too. So stop, yeah, nerd. <laughs> and, it, and his mother threw away the rest. Yeah, yep. that's right. Yeah. Uh, I don't. It was also to talk- uh, a novelization. Oh, yeah. LT wrote it, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Didn't miss a trick. God, why am I to try to find that novel now? And that's another thing Um, that we've lost, and it's so sad. I remember as a kid going into, you know, the drugstore, mm -hmm. and there'd be that big rack of paperback novels. With Some of them were really lurid. There was horror. There was detective. I got the Doc Savages and the Edgar Rice Burroughs. Conan the Barbarians. Conan the Barbarians. And occasionally snuck a few peeks at the more adult stuff in there. Racy stuff, indeed. But, um, yeah, you know, you yeah, there'd be something. Brotherhood of Satan sounds like a perfect paperback horror there Mm -hmm. yeah i i've always toyed with the idea of trying to collect some of those Mm. movie adaptations oh you should see mine how many you got i've got i've got cases full of them. cases full i don't want well that's the thing is like i'm too old to be carrying this shit around anymore (laughs) have you ever seen the book uh paperbacks from hell yes 
Great yeah. book. Great it's book. Fun. All right. Well, what this uh, what last thing do we want to say about the Brotherhood of Satan? It was a good film. It yeah. was a good. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, didn't think I would. I'll be honest. I didn't mm -hmm. think I would, but I thought it would be one of those exploitation flicks. And uh, but it turned out to be really good. Good story. Uh, great acting. Um, I, I, I just kind of fell in love with it. I, I liked it. Yeah, I thought I was going to like going into it. I was like, okay, I know I'm going to like Strother Martin, but I think the movie's going to be shit. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it wasn't. It was actually really well done. And I was mm -hmm. like, I mean, I don't. I'm, I, I guess I can see why it didn't capture an audience, but I don't. I don't know. I mean, I think it. It should have. Well, we got, <laughs> yeah. I think I think the market kind of got saturated with a lot of satanic stuff in that you know for like a two or three year period there was a lot of. Yeah. You know, race with the devils and this and that. And it, After it just, Rosemary Baby, it was a hot topic. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Um, and then this, what, what year did Exorcist come out? 73. Yeah. I, I, when and the Exorcist know, came out, it made all of these look really tame. Yeah, the only one that shot through after that was, or at least in popularity, was The Omen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah once the, once the uh, big studios got a hold of it, don't the more the regional stuff. And the possess. <laughs> the possess is a that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a more of an exorcist film. This let's uh, that's okay, so that's my take on it. This movie was an excellent palate cleanser after the possessed. There you go. There you go. Bugger. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh Jeff, any other final words before we uh, no, up. I liked it, and I, I, I again, I feel bad because I didn't. I meant to go back and listen to what Santos had to say about this in that episode, and I didn't get time. But uh, I just reiterate what we said. I think he had. I think over his time acting, these guys, uh, LQ and LV Moore, had uh, met some well qualified movie makers and got them involved in these little productions they did um because it looks very good i think yeah they and knew what a good movie saving, looked like yeah they're saving money on effects and stuff like that but uh, otherwise it's uh looks really good I mean, and, uh, you know, like chad I'm, I'm with chad i like the story i like the way it was laid out i like the uh, that they expect you to figure some stuff out on your own uh lq or uh, uh, uh strather martin's character he just sort of pops in and out like one minute he's wearing this satanic uh, -huh. uh priest robe and the other day he's the disheveled uh country mm -hmm. doctor for this little mm -hmm. town you know i almost thought uh, they were two different characters yeah. i was yeah. wondering that for most of the movies like are they the same or are they different mm -hmm. it's evil twin brothers is he, like, yeah. is he just playing two different characters just because he can but he was a, he was new to the town because they said something to him about I, I forget what the line was but they said something to him about Oh, hmm. find place to pick to retire, huh, Doc, or something like that. Oh. There you go. Yeah, I, I, I will say that I was, you know, Satan movies often have very hokey kind of reasons, like we sure. said. This this one really had, a, a, you know, an interesting idea with perpetuating immortality yeah, through, yeah. You, know, you know, getting yeah. the kids. So it, 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 it kept me invested in it, trying to figure out what was going on. Of course, all the weird dreams were bizarre, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I recommend it. Check it out. Where's it? Where's it playing again, Jeff? Tubi. 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 Tubi's become our go-to. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, and there's a couple of Blu-rays floating around out there that you can get. The, and there's a commentary on the Blu-ray that I can get a chance. I, I start trying to listen to it. I'll, I, I hate to admit this, but I just couldn't understand them. It was uh, Kim Newman and another British uh, film critic. Hmm. And they were chatting away and talking so fast, I just couldn't pick it up. And I'm in a kind of a condo. I didn't want to crank it up so I could <laughs> pick them out. So anyway, they talked some about this prevalence of creepy kid movies in the U.S. in the uh, 70s. So mm -hmm. right into the 80s, which, which moved moved to Italy, apparently, in the 80s. Mm. They definitely had their share. <laughs> As a matter of fact, one girl kind of monopolized it for a while, didn't one yeah. boy too. There was, there was talked about that a lot. All right. Well, there you go. That's our review for the Brotherhood of Satan. Check it out. It's on Tubi. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And speaking of that, Jeff, we got some feedback. We do. We have some great feedback. 
Want me to go? I, I do. Don't we want to? Uh, okay. <laughs> so the first one is for episode 142, Blood Sucking Freaks. And BC informs us that Blood Sucking Freak superstar Seamus O'Brien has been posthumously venerated with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm trying trying to remember off the top of my head. It was he the <laughs> head guy or was he the uh was the, uh, he was the eyeball guy right? little wasn't he oh, the little that, person? We're all trying oh. to figure it out. Hmm. Oh no, he wasn't. He was the 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 doctor guy or the uh not the doctor guy. He's creep. When, no, not the doctor. He's more Shakespearean. <laughs> anyway. Yes, 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 yes. I guess he did some other stuff besides <laughs> that one, because I don't think that's what's going to get you a star. Well, I always thought, uh, this, you know, you guys correct me. You should know. Uh, I thought you, like, paid for those. Yeah, but I don't think I could just walk up and do it. No, yeah, just pay for it. Yeah, probably not. Because otherwise... I'd have one already. Yeah, seriously. That, that seems like a good... Somebody, somebody Google that while we're going. Seamus O'Brien. Anyway. Next. Appreciate it, BC. Yeah, thanks, thanks BC. BC. You, you, gotta, you got us scrambling now. Yeah. Uh, 167. Uh, was that Reflection of Fear? The one with... Mm -hmm. uh, Sandra Locke. Sandra, Sandra Locke, Locke yeah. yeah. Kathy Chapman says... Holy cow! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! <laughs> this movie is beyond disturbing. <laughs> the relationship between the father and daughter is right at the line of incest. Sandra Locke plays a good, disturbed child. The twist with Aaron. Well, you can see that from the first of the movie. Not a yeah. complete shocker of an ending, but keep up the good work, crew crew. I look forward to listening to y'all every few weeks. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Appreciate Kathy. It, Kathy. Uh, Count Dracula, episode 179, from Nicholas Janky. I think so. Mm -hmm. The problem with the classic horror novels, Frankenstein, Dracula, Macbeth, The Werewolf of Paris, Jewel of the Seven Stars, is that the novels are so well-crafted that none of them can ever really be translated successfully to the screen. Hammer's horror of Dracula is very mediocre. <gasps> Ouch. Hmm. <laughs> the film is more faithful. This film is more faithful to the book. Christopher Lee was never given a heck of a lot to do in the Hammer films. He was never given much to work with in his Hammer Frankenstein or Dracula characters. It's a shame the filmmakers of this film didn't get Peter Cushing to come back as Van Helsing. Christopher Lee always needed Peter Cushing to play off. Unfortunately, even in this film, Christopher Lee still isn't given a heck of a lot to do. Um, his agent was to blame. His agent insisted that Lee be paid every day, which led to Lee not given too many scenes in this, his horror films. Huh. Hmm. I Imagine can't blame Frank... the agent for that one. I mean, that's his job, man. You know, make sure you get paid. Yeah. yeah. Imagine what Franco could have done with the Wolfman. Hmm. And Klaus Kinski was wasted in this film. He had a part that any actor could have played. That's true. But I, I think agree. he wanted to play it that way, though. Yeah, I, I don't know. To... But I agree. It doesn't. You think he was, going he was... in, oh, I can't wait to see Klaus yeah. Kinski as yeah. Redfield, and you get. <laughs> yeah. What do you think Franco would have done with the Wolfman, though? Gave him what... boobs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, what be, wouldn't it be awesome if he teamed up with Paul Nashy to do it, too? He would have no. he would have ended every scene by zooming into the Wolfman's pubic hair so the screen goes to black because that's <laughs> let's say that was a Franco let's say, move. Let's say it's done later, earlier in his career before he would do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, and the possessed episode one eighty that just went live today. We get a comment from wow. Evil Genius. I remember watching this one and kind of have a good feeling about it but it could be the nostalgia talking. It's been a long time. And yeah, I'd love to check that movie that Bill put together with the defrocked priest, I assume, redeeming himself by battling evil and absorbing demons. Pitch that to somebody. Okay. Uh, I don't remember if this was a TV movie or not, but Coma is a good 70s movie worth checking out. 
always creeped me out. Yeah, it was. It was a yeah. creepy movie. Yeah, it's it a wasn't first a TV mo- movie. It was. It was, it was, it was, a, it was an HBO. Yeah, it was a regular movie. movie yeah. But that, first that's... movie I ever saw on HBO when what? HBO first came was out. Was Coma? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I, that that goes on the cool. list, sure. 1978, Michael Douglas, Rip Torn, Genevieve Bujol. Yes. Genevieve Bujol. Uh, anyway, yeah. Well, we might have to do that at some point. And uh, lastly, from our buddy Damien Aceteo. Damien. Oh, no. And his annual Damien. Happy New Year message. Happy New Year to Happy the Happy New Year, group. sir. Thank you. As I listened to the episodes over the last year, the 70s crew had quite the variety. From the beginning, Baron Blood, Gurley, and then the final two films in Doc's Harry Bush trilogy. <laughs> Wait, what? Blood Sucking ah. Freak in 2021, and then last year's Andy Warhol's Flesh for Frankenstein and Blood for Dracula. That's fine. <laughs> I am at a loss for words. <laughs> I do I do remember those words coming out of Doc's mouth, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's George Bush's long lost cousin, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, old Harry. Bush. It was a great start. <laughs> then we got not so classics like Horror Hospital and Invasion of the Bee Girls. What do you mean? Of the B girls, uh, <laughs> but then get classics like Terror of Mecha Godzilla and Lady Snowblood. Oh man, yes. no rock was unturned to find such variety. Yes, even Star Crash. Yeah. And at a time I needed a little pick me up, I got to hear our old pal the Black Saint. Five years later, I think our friend would be impressed with the continuation of path of the path that he and Doc put us all on as fans of 70s horror. Mm-hmm. Boy, I hope so. I, hope I so. agree. Um, yeah. 2023 will be monumental as I hope and pray uh, we'll get a review of a certain movie of demonic possession that celebrates its 50th anniversary. That's, that's highly likely. Seems, yeah. But <laughs> we can only wish and dream. Well, we will also reach episode 200 sometime this year. Hmm. There uh, might be a quinkinink. Um, <laughs> the uh, as always, I close this message to you guys with the continued success, good health, and as Chief Engineer Montgomery Scott would say, "Hi, lads, steady as she goes." <laughs> Thank you. I sir. love it. I love it. Thank you. Thanks, yes. man. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Damien. Damien. Yeah, I, I forgot it. It is the fiftieth anniversary, isn't it? Wow. Yep. Wow. 50 years. I feel old. I feel older than I felt earlier. <laughs> you guys are pathetic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I need some more cheese to go with my wine. Uh, Just a baby. <laughs> we do know what our next episode's going to be. Yes. Oh, this is exciting. Who picked this one? Me. And what film did you pick, sir? It's hard. To, this this one was a hard one to see for the longest time, and it's not the first film with this title that was hard to see for a long time. It's got okay. Peter Cushing. It's directed by Freddie Francis, but it's not a Hammer film. It is The Ghoul. Ooh. And it's on Tubi. Of course it's on Tubi. Tubi. Everything's on Tubi. Yeah. yeah this is an amicus film, right? Uh, I think it's actually, I think it might be Tyburn. Oh, you're it's right. Kind of, you're right. Yeah. Tyburn. And the, um, they... it's also, it's also got William Hurt. I mean, it's, it's got a hell of a cast. It's a, it's a British horror movie from that period. Of course, it's got a great cast. People got to hmm. eat. Um, and it'll be interesting. It's been a while since I've seen it. It's, it's not perfect, but Peter Cushing, Freddie Francis, William Hurt, come on. William yeah. Hurt, no. Is there, Hurt. is there a connection between Tyburn and Amicus? I feel like. We've talked about I mean, that. they all use the same actors. I don't know if um, I'd have to look up the production <laughs> history. Yeah, because the writer is Anthony Hines, so that has mm-hmm. a hammer connection there, right? So, but uh, interesting. Yeah, well, we'll look that up. We'll Veronica look up Carlson's in it too. Oh, oh, wow! Ah, uh, Veronica Carlson. I came this close to interviewing her at a convention, and um, unfortunately, she passed away right before the convention. I would. This is definitely is one I would have liked to have talked to her about. So, 
but yeah, it'll be fun. What? Be fun. Oh, can't wait to talk about this one. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think if I've seen it. I feel They've like only got uh, seven movies listed. Tyburn on IMDb. Hmm. What were some of the others? Uh, Sherlock Holmes and the Masks of Death. Okay. An 84 TV Cushing. movie. Yeah. Legend of the Werewolf, 1975. Yeah. With That's Cushing a hard one. That's another hard one to find. Ron Moody. Hmm. Uh, Persecution. Lana Turner, Trevor Howard, Lana Ralph Turner. Bates in 1974. Hmm. Murder Elite. They, they say drama, horror, and thriller or mystery. Yeah. Ali McGraw, Billy Whitelaw. Billy Whitelaw. Interesting. They're able to get good casts. Mm -hmm. All and right. then a uh, documentary on uh, Peter Cushing, a one-way ticket to Hollywood. I'm, wow, I wonder what that's like back then. Well, it's 1989 is the release date they list, so Interesting. I don't know. All right, well, there you go. That's our Bill's episode. being invaded right now. I know. Apparently, <laughs> the ghost of Drag Strip Hollow is right outside my window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, that and the Sun Demon side by side. All right, guys. <laughs> Uh, th this was a great show. Thank you for joining me, mm -hmm. Jeff, Chad, Bill. Thank you. Uh, it was fun. This was thanks for having us. Check it out. Jeff, thank you for picking. Uh, You're welcome. Movie. Yeah, it, thanks, man. It's it, definitely it, shot up shriek by of the, list shriek of of the mutilated can't be too far off. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff show us your fall. haircut, man. Show us your haircut. It's all, it's all bl blown yeah, out. I did, I did a, well, I knew I was going to be gone for three months, so I uh you needed you know, to get a half inch shave before we left half inch shave wow crazy man all right guys let's, let's <laughs> there was out. nothing let's... there after i was done just... yeah. can't imagine you're no lq jones no. <laughs> let's get out of here just say good night good night <laughs> folks good night <laughs>